For this photography showcase, I interviewed master photographer John Wimberly, who is also known for his great interest in American Indian rock art. In 2010, he was awarded the Oliver Award for Exceptional Rock Art Photography by the American Rock Art Research Association. John Wimberly was born in 1945 in Paget, Bermuda. His family packed up and moved to San Francisco in 1948, which is where he stayed until 2003, of which he now resides in Southern Oregon. This particular photograph I find to be the most interesting, simply because when I first looked at it, uh, the first thing that came to mind was a baseball mitt and glove. And if you look at this, it sort of gives you the impression of fingers. And then this ball of light here is what I saw to be the glove. Over here was the thumb. <laughs> Too many fingers, I'm sure. You know, I see there. But the irony of it is that we will all look at this photograph and see something totally different. And that is what is so wonderful about an artist who has the ability to do that, to bring us into their world. John got started in photography in 1966. He stated that he purchased a camera while in Japan and he's been swept away by photography ever since. He also stated and made it perfectly clear that he is completely self-taught. He has had no additional training, has not studied under anyone. He taught himself how to uh, become the wonderful photographer that he is. In 1970, Wimberly purchased a 5x4 Sinar Norma View camera, of which he continues to use today. He stated that he does have six lenses that he interchanges, but none of which are favored more than the other. I also inquired about the processes that he has used during the years, and he responded, and I quote, Gelatin silver has been the only process I have ever used, except for some digital color, end quote. John Wimberly's photographs have been in over 70 exhibitions and are represented by over 500 public and private collections and museums all over the world. His latest project is called Elegy for an Angel, a posthumous love letter to honor his late wife, and it is currently being shown at New Space Gallery in Portland, Oregon during the month of May. In looking at this image, there is certainly something magical about it. And it does draw you in. The lighting um, is so serene and it really makes you wonder what's on the other side. I love this photograph. I asked John Wimberly to name at least three photographers who may have influenced him throughout his career. And the first name that came up was Jerry Yulesman, followed by Edward Weston and Alfred Stieglitz. And of course, I asked him why he made these choices. And he stated, I quote, they all affirmed that it was possible for a photograph to cross an invisible line and become a magical object End quote. He describes his art as a joyous voyage of discovery and hope that his work has become at least a bit deeper and more meaningful throughout his 46 years as a photographer. His travels have taken him to north and south parts of Australia, New Zealand, and Ireland to capture some of the most beautiful 
and natural landscape. This is this image is part of the Bitter Ridge series, and the lines are so beautiful. Um, again, it the, it draws you in just from that little sliver of light, and the the lines on the rocks, the writings on the rocks, and again, it has a sense of animation. And you know, I really question John about his images. I noticed that a lot of them take on this. Um, animated effect and I was wondering you know how if he did this on purpose and and how he managed to um, to do this and his answer was I quote I think what you're seeing is the energy in the picture which is strong enough to allow it to appear in different ways at different times there isn't any technique to achieve that level of energy as an artist you either have it or you don't though it can to a certain extent be cultivated I don't I didn't choose to have them be that way it's simply the way my pictures are studying photography as an art form is fine but academia likes to pretend that they can teach everything necessary to make great photographs but that's not the case the most one can learn in classes is how to get to the starting point as an artist the actual art of making significant work can only be learned with constant practice over time if one has a total commitment to the medium and how it manifests is different for each individual artist. The most important things can't be taught. They can only be experienced." End quote. That was very enlightening. And I can see in his images um, the magic in all of it and how he thinks and how he photographs. It just all sort of comes together. Here again we have um, an image by um, John Wimberly called the Ascending Angel and the lighting from the water is just tremendous. So naturally I had to ask him about what type of lighting does he use? Wh wh what do you take when you go on location? And this interview was done via email so in his answer he put a smiley face and he put sunglasses my light comes from the sun my reflectors are clouds I work outdoors in natural light and to be able to get this type of effect from utilizing natural light and to be in the right position at the right time and to to catch those reflectors is just amazing this again just represents why um, he is noted for being masterful at this, at photography. Um, also, uh, with um, the fact that he was the only, he is the only photographer to have a two two man exhibition with Ansel Adams. Um, again, I may have mentioned that before, but that just says so much, and he's so very humble about that. Hi Deborah. This image, the um, Ascending Angel, is part of a figurative um, series uh, that was actually entitled Descending Angel and it was taken in 1981 and the model that we see here her name is Christine Wells and she called John Wimberly one day and asked him if he wanted to go swimming and he said well sure and he said that he would uh, he wanted to photograph her while she was in the water and that's actually how these uh, photographs descending angel and ascending angel came about in fact um, a 
Descending Angel, I believe is the one, is, is one of the most um, or top selling prints and has been for the past 30 years. Um, with Ascending Angel, it you can see that John had to be underwater taking this picture of her heading towards the, the top. And I believe what we see coming down is, is the sun. So it's the sun rays hitting against the water and she was wearing all white. So um, the effect, I agree with you, this image is absolutely breathtaking. And again, it just shows how uh, Wimberly has a way of drawing you in with his pictures. And this particular image, I agree with, you, agree with you, it does have a way of embedding itself in your head. Once you see it, it does sort of make you wonder. This image is titled Descending Angel, the counterpart to Ascending Angel, the uh, image we saw prior to. And I find this image to be the most intriguing. It is very, um, well, the, the, the waves from the water and the way the light from the cloth against the water, against the darkness, it's just, um, just simply beautiful. However, um, when you look at the left foot, there is something very intriguing about it. It has six toes. And photographer Diane Arbus and gallery owner Paul Galletti, which is where this was uh, being exhibited, both question the fact that there were six toes on this leg. And when they asked John about it, I believe he stated that he, um, the model has five toes and he has no idea how that sixth toe got there. He, he, he can't explain it. So um, it is for that reason that I find this photograph to be uh, at least one of the most intriguing photographs. I did ask John about um, the exhibition that um, alongside Ansel Adams and he stated that he believes the first one was during 1985 and then the second one took place two years later. As we can see, John Wimberly is now moving off into film, and he is he has partnered with um, the well-known producer Robert Burrill, and director, I should say, and they are introducing this new film, John Wimberly, American Master. How appropriate. Um, the last question, or one of the last questions that I asked uh, Mr. Wimberly was, what is the one thing you would want people to know about John Wimberly, the artist? His answer, he photographed from his heart. <laughs>